Have you ever found something, an object or a material, where when you found it, you knew exactly what you needed to make? Like, no question, you're going to make that thing. Well, last year that happened to me. I found a big chunk of brass. And since then, I've been putting together the parts and pieces and tools that I needed to put that project together. Also, over the last year, I've had the opportunity to speak with Jimmy DiResta several times. And every time he's been encouraging and helpful, he's offered up frank and practical advice. He's been a friend and he's been a mentor. And this project just happens to be the perfect project to show my appreciation with a gift. These are the parts of a mega Jimmy Duresta ice pick. So now next I have to cut his name in there and these bevels. I've been doing some tests and before I do that, I need to sand the surface of this because if I'm sanding that after I do this, I'm likely to come over the edge with the sandpaper and ruin that nice finish. I've got this half inch stock and I think this is gonna work out for the spike. And what I need to do is make sure it'll fit inside this brass somehow. I also need a center for the lathe. At the end of this thing, when it scales up, the circle portion is about an inch and a half, so I need to mark that here so I don't cut beyond an inch and a half. I need a slightly smaller circle and that matches the sheath. The mat in this case is going to be this guy. And it's 7 eighths. So, 7 sixteenths. Here's the uh, lettering on the Darista ice pick. 
And then here's my stencil lettering. I adjusted the kerning to match the ice pick. I've never carved brass before, and I used all of these little tools. These are primarily punches and nail sets that I modified for the job. So I basically cut all the tips into shapes that I thought would work, and eventually found the, t the tips that worked well for carving. Now the only reason I could do that is because I took the time to carve this first. This took nine hours, and this took four and a half. So I, I took the time on a piece that didn't matter and went through the process and learned a bunch about the metal and about how the tools and what tools I needed. And then I implemented them on the piece that mattered where I didn't have the opportunity or option to fail. So this is going to be the spike. This is a half inch extension bar. Um, this is the mock-up I've been working on. You can see here I've got threads and this will cinch down real nice in there. And so I want that to look that way when I'm done. This bar has to get turned down to uh, that diameter on the entire bar. And then I'm going to go from here to here with threads. And then I'm going to go from here to, let's see, where's that line? That line at this half inch diameter and then from this line down to the other section I'm going to go to the point and that should make the spike. Okay, so I struggled a little bit getting the threads straight on the test uh, rods, but I think I've got a way to do it, and that's what I'm about to do in the drill press now. I've got the first half of, of the spike cut down and that's just parallel but from here over to here it's tapered so I've done some measurements and translated them into the scaled size and these are sections that I'm going to cut down on the lathe and then after I've got those sections cut down I'm going to sand them down to a point.
This lathe isn't large enough to hold the handle through the chuck, so I can't use the drill to center the hole for the threads for the spike. So I'm making this block to use as an alignment block so I can drill the handle manually. Well, I blew it. This was supposed to be the smallest hole and then I was supposed to drill that and I was supposed to step up and then drill that and so on. This is the last size, so I have to use the last piece I have left to start with the small hole. So hopefully that's good enough. So I've got this chucked in the drill press and this set in a vise and I'm going to try to get this to go straight. sheath is next. There's the joint. I'm going to do a joint that's slightly different just because of the nature of the materials I have. This is a mock-up to kind of what it's going to look like. So I have to cap the pipe with a plug and sand, sand that edge down and round and then drill a couple holes and install this. Oh yeah, that fits great. That's going to be perfect. I burned the clear coat off of this and it took about probably two hours off the sanding time because the clear coat was really tough to sand. Okay, I've got this in place. I've got this bar parallel to these two levels. I've got this adjust where I think it should be and I also have the tilt adjusted to the center of these levels so I think I'm ready to solder. Not too bad, a little bit of sanding, that'll go right away. This little dimple causes tension on the spike and that's what holds the sheath in place. I'm going to use a brass screw instead. I have these little brass screws and I want them to look more like a set screw, but I need brass so I have to modify these.
hey, I've got a list of tools and materials listed in the description. And if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing.